The hosts feel it would be a little unkind to present this podcast without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to. Well, we've warned you. Hello, and welcome once again to the Frankencast. I'm the mad scientist, Anthony Bowman. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined as always by... Turbine, the god of the science wheels, that is Eric Velasquez. My pronouns are also he, him. <laughs> <laughs> this is the movie that keeps on giving. Oh, man, it sure is. Yep. All right, folks, so we're talking about Frank and Hooker this week. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's February. It's the month of love. And we're looking for it, I guess. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, so right out of the gate, you know, we definitely should say, like, as far as trigger warnings go, content warnings, mm-hmm. this has got, you know, it's got sex work, it's got drug use. Uh, transphobia. Yeah, a little bit of transphobia. It's got, obviously, the murder of sex workers. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, you know, dicey content, but I think that this movie is pretty, like, forward thinking. Like, I think all of that stuff is serving a... a a greater purpose in terms like i think that this movie it has some things to say about the war on drugs and the crack mm-hmm. epidemic and the way that sex workers are treated in america yeah no this this is either a uh, a very stupid movie that has some smart points or a very smart movie that has a lot of stupid points <laughs> yeah uh it's it's yeah i really hope it is satire because it feels that way right like, there are yeah. literally parts where he's like, oh, I shouldn't be giving these people this crack, you know, but I'm not giving it to them. I'm just setting it in front of them. It's what they want to do with it. You know? Exactly, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, uh, Frank Henenlotter, the the guy that directed this, like, all of his movies are kind of, they're very tongue-in-cheek. They're very, you know, he did the Basket Case series. He mm-hmm. did Brain Damage. Um, you know, Brain Damage has, like, that uh, weird sort of, alien rape scene yeah. thing you know like yeah. but it, and it's 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 another one where it's like oh i see what you're doing here and you're you know definitely uh pointing to this um a, as a problem and yeah i think i think this is the same thing where it's you know like it, like you said i think it is it's a very smart movie like wrapped up in a dumb movie. like you, you see the title frank and hooker and you're like okay i know what i'm getting into here but then he just sneaks in some some smart stuff for you yeah, but if you're here for some bre- exposed breasts and uh, weirdness, then this is your movie. If you're, if any of the other stuff like puts you off, that's fine. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe skip it. Yeah, <laughs> right. We'll go ahead and say that off the bat. <laughs> we start out where uh, it looks like a reanimator type of scene. You've got um, a mad scientist kind of guy. We'll learn his name's Jeffrey. He's like looking at himself through a monitor screen and like moving his hand around. And then we'll see that the monitor is connected to a brain in a jar that has like a single like si- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like one cyclops eyeball like implanted in the front of the brain. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's yeah. trying to get it to like respond. Right. Now, first off, just the fact that this guy did this violates so many ethics, but also... <laughs> Like, it would get him, like, so paid. He would be rich just off the brain in the jar. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, just for the, the novelty of it. But but he th- Jeffrey, we will find out. Jeffrey Franken, as a matter of fact, is his name, because we, <laughs> we have to tie it that close. Um, he's got a thing for kind of lobotomies, right? Mm-hmm. As we, as we find out when he takes a scalpel out, because the brain's not... Or the yeah, the brain with the eyeball is not registering quite right. It's not following his hand like he wants it to. So he's like, I've got a, I've, I know what can fix this, a lobotomy. <laughs> so he just pulls out a scalpel, little, 
little ha uh, tack hammer and goes <laughs> right, right in one spot. And apparently, it kind of fixes it. At least it causes the brain to start moving. Mm hmm. And the eye starts like kind of twirling around a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and then. <laughs> Um, he's interrupted by um, a woman that we'll find out is his uh, his fiance's mom. mom. Right, I was like, uh, oh, is this his mom? No, it's his fiance. Like, the camera kind of, like, zooms out a little bit, and we see that he's doing all of this at a kitchen table, and she's like, can you hand me the ketchup, Jeffrey? And right. there's a she's whole cookout going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we find out that there's like uh, they're throwing a big cookout because it's his fiance's dad's birthday. Right. And so way, everybody else is outside while Jeffrey is inside tinkering with this brain. I don't know if I'm going to go to this party because it has a they brought in a, a two liter of Pepsi Cola and not Coca Cola. <laughs> so uh, no. <laughs> Clearly they got Pepsi money because they showed that one off quite prominently as mom's twirling that around. Oh, yeah. yeah. She takes the Pepsi and the ketchup and a couple other little odds and ends on a tray and goes outside. Mm -hmm. um, and there we will meet Elizabeth, uh, the fiancé. Uh, oh, and I guess we should content warn you also. There's some kind of fat phobic yeah. stuff here at the beginning. Well, um, and later on, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. but, and, and again, it feels like, like she, I mean, she's not fat yeah. at all. Like, um, but her mom is like, she's snacking on pretzels, and her mom's like, hey, you maybe want to back off on those pretzels. Those are, you know, going to add more weight or whatever. And she's like, fine, mom. Right. Uh, and it, it definitely seems like the kind of thing where, like, we as a viewer are supposed to realize, like, this is not a fat girl. This is a girl who's being called fat by society at, at large and her mom and, you know. Right. Well, I also think they're kind of, they honestly, the costume artists, whoever designed all the clothes for the this movie, they definitely padded out the windbreaker mm -hmm. that she's wearing to make it look like she's bigger but not fat. Mm -hmm. Cause, yeah. 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 They put her in like a sweatsuit with right. probably like a second sweatsuit right. underneath it or something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it uh, turns out that also Liz, uh, her mom's been giving her some issues uh, regarding her weight because she's tried every type of diet you can think of. She even had Jeffrey staple her stomach, which she tells this to her best friend, presumably. And she's like, mm. I didn't know, I didn't know Jeffrey was a doctor. Well, he's not. He's been kicked out of three med schools. <laughs> so he's almost a doctor. Yeah. You know. Kind he's of. like an amateur doctor, basically. Right. Well, he's actually a, a, an electrician at the Jersey, you know, uh, what, Jersey Electric. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah. But he can, like... What what is what's she call a bio bioelectrical engineer? Yeah, bioelectrical engineer. That that's his hobby is is hell of a um, hobby. <laughs> right. You know, of course the friends like that seems fishy. I don't know that I would trust him for that. And she's like, I mean, he's my fiance. We're going to be married. Of course I trust him. Yeah, of course I'm going to let him operate on me for no, you know. Right. That's fine. To kind of hammer the point home of like how good Jeffrey is at what he's doing, we cut back to inside, mm -hmm. um, and the brain starts kind of like freaking out in the jar, and then suddenly all the mechanical stuff around it just catch fire. Well, that's because he gave it the technical tap in the engine. <laughs> what was it? He he just slapped uh, whatever the animating power source. Pres I think it was just an air compressor and like some electronics, <laughs> Probably. right? Probably. Yeah. Know? And then of course, yeah, like you said, everything starts catching on fire. Yeah. And so Elizabeth comes inside and is like, hey, you know, we're getting ready to eat. You should come out and, and mingle. And he's like, okay. But take your brain in the jar with you because I, I need the table to make coleslaw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, of course, her, her name's Elizabeth. So we're getting a little bit of Frankenstein stuff there, too. Yeah, Elizabeth Shelley. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's I don't know. Do they ever say uh, maybe they what? show it in like the news? Yeah. In the news. Yeah. But this feels like that dynamic where, like, Elizabeth goes to get Victor to come out into the world and, you know, leave his textbooks behind for a little bit. And so, you know, uh, this feels like a really good parallel here. Mm -hmm. Outside, uh, Elizabeth reveals her big birthday gift for her dad, which is a, like, huge lawnmower yeah, that what Jeffrey is, what has... Yeah, say check off on the side of it, though? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> That would be really great. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so she, she's like, you know, Jeffrey hooked this up with a remote control, so you don't even have to push it now. Well, how great is that? Yeah. And then she decides to demonstrate for him with her back to the, the lawnmower. lawnmower. 
Yeah, we know where this is going. Right. And so but, does Jeffrey. Like, and he's hey, like, just don't stand in front of lawnmower. Whatever you do. Yeah. Yeah. And she starts pressing buttons and it starts rolling. And he's like, hey, like, seriously, move. The lawnmower's moving towards you. Get out of the way. Right. What does it have to do with it being on UHF signal? I missed. I, I got that that was a joke, but I don't necessarily get the joke. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't. UHF was like the AM radio of TV back in the day, right? right? But I don't. Yeah, that's about all I know about it. Right. But anyway, apparently this lawnmower runs on UHF, <laughs> and it also runs over Liz, and we get the title card, Frankenhooker. Yep. So right from that, we get the credits, which are the the credit design in this is really cool. So like the whole time the credits are rolling, Jeffrey is. He has this huge anatomical drawing of a woman that he is, like, covering with, like, electrical um, circuit diagram kind of stuff. And it looks so... Like, I have looked to see if, like, a poster of this exists because it just looks so cool. Well, yeah, don't don't forget to mention, we know it's a woman because they're a massive freaking boot. <laughs> yeah, the front, the that he draws... Boot, yeah. He draws a little, like, he's like, okay, I could move some hertz from right. this. I can tr- connect here. And he's, like, draw- drawing around the nipples and everything. Like, uh, But, like, the whole thing is just covered with these electrical doodles. And, yeah, it's it's really cool. And, yeah, he's just kind of, like, muttering to himself. You can't hear everything he's saying, but, like, he's talking through the whole credits. All I know is, is that he planned on putting an off switch underneath one of the boobs for just in case. <laughs> 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 That's the only thing I got. Also, yeah, he was he was going to make moderate changes to her body anyway because, you know, that's I feel that that's also commentary, right? Guy, yeah, especially the end. Well, hit that home. Oh, absolutely. But so after he kind of finishes with his diagram and the credits have ended, he goes over to his bookshelf, pulls out uh, his copy of Grey's Anatomy, mm-hmm. and he opens it up and it's like the you know the classic cutout with a hidden thing inside, and it's a. VHS tape. Well, he also has the brain in the jar in an aquarium now. So at least he has a nice place for it to live. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he puts the VHS in, in the VCR, and um, it is like he's tape-recorded news reports about Elizabeth's death and seems to, like, sort of obsessively watch them to, like, you know, it's that grieving thing where you do things that are just going to make you sad, but you have to do them because it's part of the grieving process. Right. And by the way, the reporter here sucks ass. Mm-hmm. Like, she, she literally calls her girthful. Uh, right. And says that whenever she was uh, ran over by the lawnmower, her personality went raining down on the attendees. <laughs> Golly. Yeah. She was reduced to a tossed salad. <laughs> what? <laughs> Damn. Leave her alone. Leave her. Let her family grieve. <laughs> yeah it's like yeah i mean obviously this is just like a silly news report because yeah. it's just a, a place to put a bunch of one-liners and yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's terrible but funny at the same time right uh and then we get some interview stuff and we find out that some parts uh of elizabeth were never found specifically the head but we couldn't make out the other parts right everything yeah. else kind of chewed up and the reporter kind of like there's a clip of her like hounding uh, Jeffrey at his house, and he's like, let people grieve, and slams the door in her face. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, did you recognize this reporter? Oh, no. I, I feel bad now. No, I didn't, really. <laughs> She's the mom from Pete and Pete. If you remember, the, the mom that had the, the plate in her head. Yep. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we might be showing our age here with that. Right? I don't yep. know if a lot of people will know that one. Uh, but, yep, firmly it's... millennials here. <laughs> Strongest man in the world. Yeah, I love that show. Mm-hmm. But yeah, here she's just got this little minor thing at the beginning, but I thought it was nice to see her. Yeah. As the tape's ending, um, Jeffrey's mom comes in to check on him. And, you know, she's like, you need to move on. I could set you up on some dates. You know, you can't just sit away rotting here in your, uh, you know, your room being sad about Elizabeth forever. Right. Actual, like, more or less healthy ways to cope that no one wants to hear at the time, right? Because you don't want to hear that stuff. You're like, yeah, yeah, I know that's best for me, but also, shut up. Yeah. I want to wallow in my But then it kind of, there's like a a good reverse where like, uh, Jeffrey's like, you know, honestly, 
I'm, I, I barely recognize myself anymore. Like, I feel I'm descending into madness. Uh, I'm becoming dangerously amoral. Uh, he just kind of goes on this big rant. <laughs> yeah. And, like, he's confessing, like, I am breaking with reality because I'm grieving so much. And, like, you know, for, for our purposes, he's saying, I'm becoming a mad scientist. Right. <laughs> and his mom's just like, can I get you a sandwich, maybe? Would that help? <laughs> yeah, I think we have some chicken salad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yep, okay. <laughs> to be fair, that's kind of a heavy drop, right? Yeah, right. And, like, it seems like, he, you know, his mom kind of knows his deal because she kind of, like, goes over to the fish tank and, like, taps on the glass and looks at the brain. Like, she knows he's into some weird science stuff. Mm -hmm. But he he decides to get his own dinner. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to he's gonna go out to get it. You know, he's going to go up, take, get takeout, I guess. Yeah. And so then we see that, you know, his takeout is that he, he goes to like the garage or the shed behind the house uh, where he's got his like science lab. And then he has a candlelit dinner with the decapitated head and what toe and arm. Yes. That he just pulls out of his freezer ba bath of goo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's got like a big chest freezer, but when he opens it up, it's like purple, boil, like bubbling kind of liquid. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he fishes out these parts and sets them at the table, and they have they have dinner together. Yeah, he he pulls out a nice slice of New York's finest uh, <laughs> pizza, basically. <laughs> and like you know, she's not animated at yeah, all. This yeah. isn't like you know Doctor Hill and Reanimator. This is a dead head laying on a table. Uh, and he even tries to like pour some wine in her mouth, and it just runs out of her neck Total, yeah. all over the table. Yeah. <laughs> but then he's like, he he, but he talks to her the whole time as if she's alive. And then he's like, "All right, I've got a plan. Everything's gonna be okay." His plan is he's got various photographs of like from porn magazines right. where he's just taped Elizabeth's head over the porn star's head. He's like, "I will give you one of these bodies. Which one do you like? I know which ones <laughs> I like." <laughs> right. It's very similar to Frankenstein 90, where they go to, like, mm -hmm. the, the burlesque show and, you know, the, yeah, the Frankenstein's part. like, yeah, he's like, you know, I like her butt, but her boobs are better. And it's, it's very similar to that yeah, kind of this, deal. This definitely has a lot. Th these Those two movies are in the same vein, mm -hmm. but there's no there's no essay in this one that may, yeah. ruins everything. <laughs> right. Yeah, thankful that you know we've watched several movies in a row. It feels like that had that, so it's kind of nice that this movie that you would assume would be super offensive is this the does not have it. Is this yeah. the one? <laughs> Man, we're in a weird line of work. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and so after he shows her the photos, then we get he reads her a poem that he has written that is absolutely bizarre. Uh, warning contents under pressure is the name of the song. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if you didn't get that, he knows he's, he's snapping. He's driving. Yeah. Around. One of the things is like, I'm so full of love with you that I'm afraid I might burst like aerosol cans Dude. sometimes do. <laughs> like, it's a, it's a very bizarre poem. That's also and a very like, 80s thing, right? Mm, right. And then he folds up the, the poem and he tucks it between the toes of the foot and drops them all back into the uh, the bubbling freezer. By the way, I'm just going to say this. Jeffrey has an amazing mullet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the perfect 1980s mullet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. And so, yeah, he starts kind of ranting about that, like, you know, he knows the only way for her to live again is that somebody's going to have to die. Mm -hmm. um, he's trying to figure out what that's going to look like. And then he turns on the news and the weather is on and, you know, you got the weatherman. You know, I never knew I wanted to have a horror host as the weatherman. <laughs> Yeah, this is Zachary, the like classic horror host. If you if you uh, know who he is, and like he is doing like a horror host thing. Like he's like, it's a spooky electrical storm coming this way in two days. Perfect for you, mad doctors out there. Right. Ah, <laughs> uh, perfect. And you know what? This is this is perfect for Jeffrey because uh, he decides he's going to run over. He grabs his drill, uh, grabs a bowling ball bag for some reason dumps out the bowling ball and it reveals that there's a bunch of drill bits in this thing <laughs> and he's like all right i'm ready yeah so because he's got this short window of time there's like two days before the storm mm -hmm. he's got to get on things so he needs to focus and like you said earlier one of his kinks is lobotomies apparently right so he has <laughs> this is an amazing line 
Like, I, I almost want this on my tombstone. Uh, <laughs> some people need drugs. Some people need booze. I just need some surgical assistance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like the tagline of the movie almost, right? Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he starts drilling into his own head to like... And it's like he, he starts drilling, and then as soon as it, like, drills in, he starts talking really fast. It's like it's helping him think somehow. Right. By the way, uh, no blood. No blood. <laughs> He's drilling into his own brain. No no spurts, no nothing. This is the cleanest, like, trepanation ever. <laughs> There's a, Really, this movie has almost no gore in it. Like, really? when Elizabeth gets run over, you don't see it. You see a splatter of blood. Like, does it hit, like, a lawn gnome or something? It yes. hits something. Yeah. Um, there, and I think that's literally the only blood. Well, it depends. <laughs> because there's also the scene with the super crack. Yeah, but it's like bloodless. Yeah, true. It's, it's, um, yeah, I guess yeah, there's well, no blood, really, except for the... Yeah, it, wow. Yeah, it's... It, it's. I think that this might be the kind of thing where they were like, we're pushing the envelope <laughs> in so many ways. Let's, let's cut the gore back so that we don't just get completely trashed by the MPAA. Yeah, it was basically like, you guys got so many boobs, if you put another speck of blood into this, you're getting NC-17, guys. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he drills, and at first he's like, okay, I know what I can do. I'll get stewardesses. I'll go to the airport. I'll trick some stewardesses. That'll be my, my goal. Right. And then he's, he stops drilling. He's like, I don't know, man. That's, that's there's stupid. airport security. Yeah. That's, that's going to be hard. So he drills again, and then he's like, wait. If I'm trying to, like, get body parts, there are women out there who sell their bodies. Right. Yeah. And some people will ask no questions, you know? Yeah. yeah and you know of course that's like the the fallacy that you know sex workers sell their bodies and that like you know every worker doesn't sell their body right. in some degree to like whatever they're doing listen we're um, all whores to one degree right right i don't know if we um, need to put that in i don't know if that's too much but like come that, on. yeah i mean it, i think it's definitely the, you know like uh, honestly you know there are people who work like hard factory jobs who literally do damage their bodies, bodies. in their work in ways that sex workers n don't necessarily right. you're either selling um, your time or your body in some form yeah um but hey the good news is and, he has a christmas club account he can use to pay these ladies <laughs> right i mean i don't know the i don't know what his plan is that they're going to need the money later but sure Right, yeah. <laughs> so he, like, I, it just cuts to him, like, driving around the, like, I think he's, it's, you know, it's this is, like, Times Square in, like, you know, 70s, 80s New York when it was, like, sort of red light district and, like, peep shows and grindhouse movie theaters and all that. And, like, again, you know, if you're into Frank Henenlotter stuff, they're all set in this area. Like, he loves this sort of, like, grimy New York. To be fair, everyone in the 80s kind of loved that version of New York. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so we have Jeff walking around, and he uh, he mentions, he sees all the sex workers there, and he's like, what a buffet. Not a buffet, buffet. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. of weird line reads in this. There's another one that I, I specifically want to call back later. Yeah, yeah, he, especially like him. Especially, well, him and when we finally get the, the Frankenhooker, oh, yeah. Elizabeth, like Amazing. everything she does is just weird in the best way. Yep. I'm, honestly, she she deserved an Oscar. She was snubbed. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you play that part without just cackling? Yeah, throughout the whole thing. I don't know. <laughs> but so yeah, he you know he kind of is driving around. Then he finally sees a, a woman who kind of gets his interest, and he stops and talks to her. I can't remember if she notices it from his accent or if he says, but like she knows that he's from New Jersey, and so she starts calling him Jersey Boy. Yeah, well, I think she actually notices his accent, and says, "Hey, where are you from?" And he is from Jer from across the river. I mm -hmm. think is what he says. And she's like, oh, Jersey boy. And we'll ultimately learn her name is Honey. Right. She asks what he wants, and he's like, you know, I'm looking for some good parts. Right. <laughs> she's like, well, you uh, got the money? Or I've got yeah. good parts, and I've got good parts in all the right places, is what she says. It, yeah, and she, like, pulls her corset down to show him a few of her parts. Uh, and he's he's interested. I mean, she's not wrong. No, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, and so, yeah, he shows her the money, and she's like, okay, yeah, let's go, let's go. She's, like, ready to jump in the car, He's and like, he, like, locks the door real quick. We, we, yeah. we, we need a few more girls. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> yeah, and so then he gives her his, like, his story, basically, that he's like, okay, so I want to arrange a party, and he like, six or seven beautiful girls. This is for my sick brother. <laughs> right. uh, so, you know, trying to, like, 
play that kind of like <laughs> make a wish foundation sort of angle um and he's like money's no object and she's like well yeah we could probably do that but you're gonna have to talk to zorro right and we also have to have a beauty contest because it's we're not gonna make it we, you know we're gonna keep ratcheting up the weird here right mm-hmm. basically we're gonna we're gonna judge you by your parts so we find out Zorro is it's is her pimp, and so then we cut to Jeffrey and Honey together. They go to Zorro's preferred hangout, the uh, strip club. yeah, and it's called Huevos Grande <laughs> Bar and Grill. <laughs> like I, I really want to say there's like some some Latino stereotypes, but also Zorro is he's Latino. He's played by Joseph Gonzalez. So he's actually Latino, even though it sounds like he's playing a bad, you know, yeah. bad stereotypical Latino. Yeah. Like, I'm like, is this guy German? With the way his, his like, voice sounded, but no. Yeah, his accent in it is very strange. Yeah, I think he's he's playing up Cuban a little bit too much. Mm, That's okay. kind of what I think is going on. But yeah, so Honey kind of, like, leads Jeffrey through the, the club back to, like, the world's most filthy bathroom. <laughs> God, so gross. It's, it's like it's like a bathroom that has stalls within its stalls. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's and and like there's not a square inch of the place that's not covered in graffiti. Uh, it's just you know again leaning into that like grimy New York thing. And we meet Zorro, who is uh, in addition to being a pimp, is also a drug dealer. Right, specifically crack that he gives to a I'm assuming Satanist. <laughs> because the guy's <laughs> definitely talking about the the powers of almighty hell. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There's a very just strange little guy that's in like one, for a right. moment and then gone. Like, all up in Zorro's ear, like just talking to him until Zorro's like, here's your crack, get away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Honey's like, let me go talk to him. I'll, I'll uh, arrange a meeting, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Jeffrey notices that she has a Z tattooed on her arm in a circle, and Zorro is wearing the same emblem on a big, you know, chain necklace. Yeah. So we got to make him gross in that he basically brands his, his prostitutes mm-hmm. or his hoes, as, you know, they're, they're known. Yeah, he, ca- he, he definitely calls them his bitches many, many times in this movie. Yeah, yeah and so, like... Jeffrey talks to him and kind of, you know, arrange, arranges things and also says, in addition to the girls, I'd like to buy some drugs for the party, too. Right. Uh, and so buys some some crack from Zorro as well. Right. Well, it turns out maybe he wasn't necessarily buying the crack to use, but he was buying it to refine. <laughs> yeah. So then we actually so the next scene is him back in his lab. He's like you said, he's refining this crack to make super crack. <laughs> super but crack. on the TV, while this is all going on, there's like a local kind of like cable access talk show going on. Mm-hmm. And here we kind of get like, I think this is sort of some of the thesis voice of reason stuff for this movie. Just kind of hidden here. Right. Um, you have a woman talking about the crack epidemic and how, you know, sex work and the crack epidemic sort of like feed off of each other. You know, these girls, they become addicted and then they, they need the drugs to be able to do their work. And then they need the, the work money to buy the drugs. And it just is a spiral. And, you know, she's got this organization where she's trying to help sex workers get off of drugs and get out of that lifestyle. If that's what they want. Right. Well, we can't because this is a comedy. Quite plainly, we just can't let that sit there. We have to. We had to have to add a joke in that her organization is known as Hold On to Our Knowledge of Equal Rights, or alternatively known as Hooker. <laughs> yeah. Right. And like the whole time, Jeffrey is like making this crack, and he's like, "She's right. Crack kills. It's ba- it's bad." <laughs> right. He's like, he's, yeah, he is literally agreeing with her, but he's like, he's like, well. At least I'll make this. This will kill him quicker and without pain. <laughs> yeah. And in this, this like, report or whatever, there's, like, some B-roll footage, and he sees video of Zorro shaking down one of his girls for money. Well, it turns out um, that that girl turns into Elizabeth. Yeah, like, I, you know, I guess this is, like, his guilt or something, and she, like, turns and looks right at the camera and is like, help me. Yeah, help me, Jeffrey. And he kind of, like, jolts kind of awake, sort of, and then goes to... Uh, drill his brain again right behind the ear once again no blood (laughs) just jamming that thing right behind the ear and then this is where like you were saying earlier he's like i'm not actually gonna kill anybody i'm i'm just 
placing the super crack near them and right, whatever they happen to do with it, it it definitely feels like it's a metaphor for like the way that the government just like turned it either directly put crack right. into black neighborhoods or at least at the very least turned a blind eye right. to it yeah. um or actively yeah. help, cro- help it cross borders i'm just mm-hmm. saying yeah yeah um, you know, we're not going to kill, <laughs> you know, impoverished people of color, but mm-hmm. we're going to, we're not going to stop them from doing it to themselves. Right. With, I'm not holding yeah. a gun up to their head, right? He literally mm-hmm. says. Yeah. Well, yep. uh, also, if you're, uh, if you don't like animal cruelty, there's really, it's really not, but it's definitely <laughs> heavily implied. <laughs> yeah. He, um, he has a guinea pig as you do when you're a scientist and he, uh, gives it some of the super crack and it just explodes. <laughs> Tough the hair. No blood once again, <laughs> just tough the hair. So, yeah. But man, he gets really horny over this guinea pig. Because he's like, yeah, I love the, your moves. You know, if I was a guinea pig, I'd be right in there with you. And it's like, calm down, my man. <laughs> you're, you're killing this thing with super crack. Leave it alone. Yeah, he's just such a weirdo. Like, yep. <laughs> Uh, and so then we cut back to uh, New York, and Jeffrey's meeting up with Honey again, uh, and they they go into like you know just a standard issue pay by the hour hotel. Honey takes him up to the room and introduces him to all the girls. And right, she's we basically like, have roll call, right? Yeah, and she go, you know she's like, hey girls, this is Jersey Boy, Doctor Jersey Boy, but you can call him Jeffrey. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, the the girls are. Angel, Crystal, Amber, Anise, Chartreuse, Snow, Sugar, and Monkey. Monkey. What? <laughs> Hell of a name. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. And then we get just like a hilarious montage of Jeffrey inspecting the girl's parts. And mm-hmm. it's like him, you know, like crawling between their legs and like looking up. and Be- like, Because you know. it's like the, the 90s slash, or it like is 1990s slash the late 80s, right? That was the big mm-hmm. thing, crawling between the legs and looking up. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, <laughs> but, and it, yeah, I mean, and this is like again, this is sort of you know, I mean, it's showing him reducing these women to parts, parts, yeah, uh, and like comically so. Like there's a there's a part like that's just like a close up of like a breast filling the entire screen, just like a huge nipple, and he's just like totally awesome as he like puts up a magnifying glass to right. look at it. He just, he just lightly touches it with his finger, like, <laughs> yeah. utterly awesome. And then there's a part where he draws a check mark on someone's butt what? with a sharpie. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, like, I I think the, the fact that this is as over the top as it is is yeah. it's making it clear that this is a parody. Like, this is so ridiculous that you can't see it as anything other than ridiculous. Right. Well, Zorro decides he's going to come into the the hotel lobby. I guess if you could call it that, and he's he's going to wait on his bitches. Mm -hmm. and you know upstairs honey's like you know your time's about running out you got to pick you can't keep us all Yeah, you got 30 um, minutes you pick your perfect woman and then the rest of us have to go on the street and he's like but you know i can't decide there's just it's you know there's just too many choices the girls are kind of getting frustrated that like you know this is taking so long and then he's like "Ah, i don't he starts to maybe feel a little guilty like knowing what he's gonna do Mm -hmm. and he's like maybe maybe this was a bad idea and they're like oh no no no, you you gotta pay us we gotta have the money now yeah so um honey goes through his bag and finds the money but but also finds the bag of super crack (laughs) and she i've never seen anyone this comedically excited for drugs (laughs) but she's like yeah crack in here yeah, I mean, I think that this again, like, this feels like if you, like, filmed, it's like kids on Christmas or kids getting, like, a bag of candy or something. Like, mm-hmm. they're all, like, kind of fighting over, they tear the bag open, like, drugs are going everywhere. Like, they're very excited about this in, like, a, a cartoonishly childlike way. Right, they literally tackle Jeffrey down so that they can share the, the super crack amongst themselves. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, who's got a stem? Like they're getting out their like pipes and everything. Like they're, uh, they all you know smoke this crack, uh, and then they crank up the radio and start dancing naked. Okay, now if if you didn't think this movie was satire before, baby, let me tell you, he literally says, "Not the devil's music," as the the music starts like giving subliminal messages of like have have unprotected sex, do drugs, play this song backwards. <laughs> yeah, the song for this scene is fantastic. It's, 
I, I would literally like listen to this in a club. It's a, it's the best. Yeah, and like the whole time Jeffrey is just, like, there's a part where two of the girls kiss, and Jeffrey's like, "Oh that's, no, that's not natural. You shouldn't be doing that. You'll hurt yourself." I don't know how. It didn't look like they were. They looked like they were doing just fine. Uh, and then so we finally the the crack kicks in and one of the girls just explodes. Yeah, it's it's the redhead, right? The one who had the tattoo of like lips literally by her lips. Mm, yeah, yeah. So she's just like I I feel kind of hot. I feel kind of warm. And then just boom explosion. And then all the girls start freaking out because one of their friends just exploded, right? <laughs> so then we have the lesbian couple, presumably. The, the, uh, the blonde blows up, then the lesbian couple blows up, and one of their legs shoots off and kicks <laughs> over a lamp. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so one by one they're dropping. Um, there You get, like, one girl who's, like, crawling on all fours towards the door. and She almost gets there. Uh, yeah, and then she explodes. And, like you know again like so the like they have cast all of these women and made like realistic mannequins like wax dummies basically but when they explode it's like there's like fireworks inside right. them there's no guts there's no gore uh it's like sparks and chunks of foam or plastic or whatever the skin's made out of and that's it yeah that's pretty much it it's the most bloodless uh scene of violence i've ever uh, experienced also though this is when zoro like gets upstairs and he's like I'm, I'm fucking tired of it. It's past time. The girls need to come down here and get on the street. So as that one girl explodes almost touching the door, he's like, what the fuck is this? What's going on here? And then he, he enters the room, uh, and then he's greeted with head. I mean, <laughs> with somebody's head hitting his head. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, is it Honey? I think she's I the think last one to blow up. Right. Her, yeah, she's her. about to stab Jeff because she's like, oh, you, you fucked us. Like, you mm -hmm. did something here, Jeff. Yeah, her head hits Zoro, and then that knocks him out. Right. So, yeah, then at that point, you know, Jeffrey is, like, you know, Zoro's knocked out, and he's, like, picking up the, the body parts, putting them in trash bags, and he's like, I'm sorry, I promise once I get Elizabeth fixed, I'll put all the rest of you back together, I'll bring you all back to life, which, of course, you know, if he's using parts, parts of them of to make Elizabeth, then they're not all coming back to life, that's for sure. <laughs> right. Or, yeah, I mean, somebody's going to be missing a torso, so that's kind of hard to come back from. <laughs> Maybe not, yeah. not so much as we'll find out in the in the end. Um, <laughs> but it turns out that he's he, this is uh, estrogen based blood serum uh, that he's going mm -hmm. to use to revive them. So weird. Yeah, which pe yeah, keep keep that in mind. Yeah. That, that becomes a, an important point later. Where did those foreshadows come from? <laughs> so yeah, he like he fills up I think like three trash bags full of parts. Yeah, he throws them over the fire escape two stories <laughs> up at least. Yeah. Let's not damage these parts anymore, Jeffrey. Come on, man. Right, yeah. And so then he climbs down, puts them all in the trunk of his car, and, and heads home. And he just straps the trash bag in the back of the, the, the trunk of the, the car. Like, mm -hmm. legs are visible. Someone should be <laughs> yeah. like, why does that guy got legs in the back of his car? That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, yep, so he, uh, he gets home and starts unloading his uh, supplies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then it's just him selecting parts. And, you know, he's, like, getting two legs. And he's like, oh, that one doesn't match. Uh, and then he, the best one is that he, like, gets out. He's got this plate of various Breast. breasts. Pile of breasts. And he's got one upside down at first. And he's like, no, that, that doesn't look right at all. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he finally finds two that, that match and he's happy with. Right. And I, I do like that he's – I think it's kind of adds to the comedy that he's literally welding – these parts together like he has the welding mask and he has the um the torch and everything and like every once in a while he's like oh well this isn't going to go back normally so he pulls out the purple putty <laughs> and slaps it on the parts and sticks it on before welding yeah. it on there but he finds one with some bunions oh no <laughs> yeah i don't know why he doesn't just get a different leg but instead he gets this huge file and just like files off the bunions right he blows on it to blow off the, the filings <laughs> Yeah, and then, you know, he gets Elizabeth's head and sets it with the rest of them and is like, okay, I'm going to, I'll keep you safe. The storm is there. He mm -hmm. cranks open the roof. Like well, he, his... he also deposits all the ladies' other parts back into the freeze freezer. Mm, yes. Yeah, because, of course, they've got to be saved so that, you know, he, he's going to, he's convinced that he's going to revive them later. Mm -hmm. Sure is. Uh, yeah, and like you said, the storm starts rolling in. 
and um, he does actually wonder if he's doing the right thing at the last second. But it doesn't stop him. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, and so like the the roof of the garage opens up, um, and you know he raises Elizabeth or that raises the uh, her, his creation right. out of the roof. And by the way, I love this man's do-it-yourself mad sciencing because he's using <laughs> stuff like engine hoists and car lifts and like mm-hmm. stuff you would find in an automotive shop, an air compressor. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. God bless this man. Yeah. And this is really, I mean, it's one of the better science labs we've seen in a little bit. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of sparks. Um, I mean, my favorite part was the giant fucking turbine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a, huge, there's a huge turbine, and then right next to it is a smaller kind of sparking science wheel. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you know, like we say, it, it, the more sparks and the more movement, the, the cooler the, the labs look. And this one's right up there. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I like how he wishes her good luck as he's sitting here up to the lightning. It's like, yeah. <laughs> the worst thing is it's just charred. The body's just charred. You yeah. Know? And, like, it's, again, like, how cartoonish this is. Like, so he raises her up out of the roof, and then we get, like, a long shot of the, the, the house mm-hmm. or the garage from outside. And then an antenna comes up, and it is absurdly tall. Like, yeah. it is the, like... I, there's no way that he could have even gotten this into the building. Like it is ridiculous, and you know it's the lightning rod, and it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the lightning strikes it, and we see it like actually run down the length of that tower, and it runs into the freezer. Where'd those four mm-hmm. shadows come from again? Damn it! <laughs> yeah, and so the, you see the freezer. There's like purple sparks kind of crawling all over the outside of it. Right, red light. Uh, it starts kind of rocking a little bit. Yeah, red light coming from underneath the the lid mm-hmm. to let you know shit's about to happen. <laughs> yeah. So then he lowers Elizabeth down, and somehow, so when she went up, she was laying horizontally. Yeah. When she comes down, she's Damn. vertical. I don't, I don't know how that happens, but that's how, <laughs> that's how it is. Yep. Uh, and but she's under a sheet, so we get kind of like the Bride of Frankenstein sort of reveal, where he like pulls the sheet off. Oh boy, do we! Just... <laughs> purple hair, purple bra, or uh, what? What is that? Uh, not a, a bralette, and yeah, purple it's... miniskirt. And big, like, Frankenstein boots. Platform boots, yeah. So as soon as he pulls off the, the thing, like, she's, like, moving really twitchy. Like, she's... Very bright Looks like she's just been... Yeah, yeah. And, you know, obviously looks like she's just been reanimated by lightning. So she's all, like, uh, you know, jerking around and stuff. And then she starts just saying, basically, like, a combination of, like, sex worker buzz phrases and just lines from the movie that we've already heard people say. Right. Hey, you looking for some company? Want a date? Do you have any money? And when he's like, what? She's like, oh, no money, and just pimp slaps him. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, yeah, she, he's knocked out, and she just leaves. So she's kind of, like, you know, doing, like, the kind of Frankenstein shuffle, like, you know, not comfortable in this new body yet right one thing um, i do like about how the how she portray the actress portrays this character is like every once in a while she'll she'll make a couple steps and then like it's like something's going on in her brain because she pulls a face right mm-hmm. like, almost like her there was a misfire in her brain or something like that you know yeah there's this specific like if, if you've seen the movie you know like she like moves her lips like crooked you know mm-hmm. like but yeah so she she leaves and heads to the train and gets on and is being you know stared at by other passengers because obviously this you know sex worker that's all twitchy and <laughs> strange is, is has a lot of scars and uh <laughs> yeah other like uh stitches and things like that (laughs) yeah yeah she looks very out of place and everybody uh yeah they're they're looking at her with some side eye Mm -hmm. and then jeffrey wakes up and is like "Uh, uh uh-oh where'd she go what's going on right she ran off uh and then he like remembers what she said before she knocked him out and he's like oh no so yeah she's headed to the red light district basically he heads out to find her. Meanwhile, we see her just kind of like walking around the streets of New York, just kind of still looping all those phrases. Want a date, looking for some action, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. She actually uh, approaches a guy and just grabs him. It's like, hey, <laughs> you want a date? And he's like, uh, thank you for asking, but no. <laughs> Very politely, which is appreciated. Yeah. Right. Uh, but she, 
she does eventually she yeah she even like knocks a guy down i, I think i don't know if it's that guy or someone else but no, she knocks someone creep. over who's <laughs> yeah. uh but ultimately she does find a guy who's who's down he wants to go on a date well, with her i love that she, she here's what she does she looks directly at the camera and goes jeffrey we only have a few minutes left have you found the perfect woman hearkening back to that <laughs> and then we yeah. cut to this other guy you know a small shortish guy with like bald head you know just normal and he's like i sure have <laughs> yeah so he's ready to go back to the hotel with her and she kind of leads him that way and the whole time she's still just saying things that don't really make sense but this guy's so excited that he's just like making them make sense basically like he's yeah. agreeing with her and <laughs> he, he thinks he's role playing and he's into it <laughs> yeah yeah, and he's like, "Oh, you want to play doctor? Okay, we can play doctor." I'll be she does the, this is Doctor Jersey Boy. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she reveals her breasts, and she's her, her nipples are purple, Anthony, like actually purple, <laughs> yeah. like violet. Yeah, there's there's never really an explanation. So like, her hair is purple now, and there's mm-hmm. no explanation for that. And she's dressed it all in purple, and then yeah, purple nipples. I I, I don't <laughs> I don't know why, but that's that's the way it is. <laughs> I guess we got a color code or something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, and it, it it is kind of funny though because then um, when Jeffrey is like walking around a little bit later and he's like trying to he's like has any, have you seen a, a girl like she's about this tall she's purple <laughs> and right like, but, but she's the guy not purple but, yeah. but she's purple, <laughs> she's purple. but the guy's like he, he sees her fully naked and he's like he, he looks almost disgusted but then after a second he's like oh boy yeah buddy <laughs> yeah yeah, so she jumps on top of him and, you know, starts kind of, you know, riding on him. Is it getting uh, hot here, suddenly... or is it just me? <laughs> and then it gets a little too hot in here, and, like, you can see, like, electric Smoke. sparks in the guy's, like, mouth and everything, and then he just, uh, his head flies off. Right, at the point of orgasm, so I guess good for him, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. he's like, oh, that was the best. His, my, his head, his decapitated head in her hands, like, ah, oh, that's the best. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely worse ways to go, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Depends what you're looking for, I guess. <laughs> so she heads out, and there's like a kind of creepy guy in the hallway who starts hitting on her. He kisses her and also gets electrocuted and dies. Right, we just see his head thrown out the window, basically, from the explosion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it lands in a trash can. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, she does hilariously after she kills those two guys. She goes back and rifles through their wall, like wallets, because stereotypes right. and stuff, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at this point, Jeffrey runs across some of the other sex workers who were near Honey. Okay. The the first time that he met her. Here's here's the next best r- line read of this whole fucking movie, is that uh, he goes up and these girls are like, "Yeah, we can do whatever, you know, whips, chains, you know, handcuffs, dildos." <laughs> I'm like, God bless that woman for never knowing that. God bless her. <laughs> it's for the best, really. There's also, like, I, I, we skipped it because it's just a dumb thing, but since we're talking about funny line reads, there's a part where Jeffrey talks to a guy, a Swedish guy. Oh, right. Or a guy with an accent, and the guy's like, I, I know, I don't, I don't know who you're talking about. And he's like, what are you, some kind of Swede? Right, well, he talks about, I had two girls last night, do, 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 or whatever, I don't know. That was a terrible Swedish accent. I don't even know what that was. But the, what are you, some kind of Swede, cracks right. me up every time I watch this. <laughs> right. Uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, so the 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 girls that he's talking to, you know, he's like, I'm no, I'm not. Lo- I'm looking for a specific girl. She's got a um, a Z tattoo on her arm, and oh, they're like, shit, that's Zoro's girls. All of them died the other night. Are you the guy that killed yeah. them? So they they are like, get the fuck out. Yeah, they're, and he's like, no, I swear they're coming back. They'll be back soon. I promise. Right. <laughs> and he actually gets accosted by another, presumably a pimp, uh, who's like, hey. Did you do that, or did you do the right thing, is what he asks him. So I'm guessing mm-hmm. it's like, did you kill them, or, you know, you know what, did you, what did you do? And Jeffrey's yeah. like, nope, I'm hopping in the car and driving off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, meanwhile, um, Elizabeth's still walking around, saying all of her catchphrases, and then she sees the Huevos Grande, Grande Bar and Grill. So she goes in there to try to pick somebody up, right. and Zorro is also there, mourning right. all of his bitches. Right. He's complained to one of his friends. I don't even know if the guy's actually named, but he's like, 
Man, all my bitches exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth is like talking to a guy that's kind of like flirting with her and stuff, and then she sees a bowl of pretzels. And this is like the first time that she kind of like does something that's an Elizabeth thing and not one of the sex workers. Mm -hmm. So she like starts kind of like chowing down on the pretzels uh, like she was at the very beginning of the movie. And we we did we forgot to mention Spike, who is the lady bartender, who is amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, She beats a guy in a uh, arm wrestling contest immediately. (laughs) But she turns to Elizabeth and she's like, hey, honey, maybe you need to go easy on the pretzels. Well, Elizabeth is tired of that shit. And she yeah. just snarls at Spike. <laughs> yeah. Then it's as she's like talking to the the guy that's flirting with her, mm-hmm. she says Zoro's name in one of her one of the th- quotes that she's saying from earlier. Right. And Zoro's like, "Hey, that's me. I'm Zoro." <laughs> yeah. So he's like, "What?" You know, he's curious what's going on. So he gets up to go check on her. Meanwhile, so the guy that's flirting with her. He goes under the table. Is he like, is he going down on her? Yeah. Or what is going on? Almost certainly. Okay. Almost certainly. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he crawls under the table in the bar and is like, yeah, on all fours underneath, yeah, under the table. And then suddenly we just see his legs start to like shake. Like he's being electrocuted. Yeah, we see smoke. Cause, cause I mean, I don't want to be crude here, but her, her vagina is electric. <laughs> Right. As we've we've known from earlier, but yeah, so he has <laughs> that has to be happening because we just see yeah. his legs like shoot. They're they're sticking straight up in the air. He's smoking. Then all of a sudden he explodes. Uh, there's a we get a transphobic. I don't know if that's a joke or what that is, but um, as the guy's going down on her, he says, well, "Look at this! Look at this thing here." And it's like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay, whatever. That's that's not great. But yeah, as the guy explodes, she presumably screams, and then everyone starts running out of the bar because a person just exploded. Yeah, but but Zoro is curious. He he wants to know what's up, so he goes to her and like confronts her, and then sees the tattoo on her arm. He's like, "Who are you? Wait, this ain't your arm. This is one of my bitches' arms." <laughs> oh, also, we have a street preacher who's like talking about you know the horror of Babylon and all that crap. Jeff r- rolls up immediately. He's like, hey, have you seen her? <laughs> Presumably the Lord of Babylon. He's like, I have. She's in the bar. <laughs> okay. Thank you, he says, and just runs <laughs> off into the bar. <laughs> That's a great, great joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so inside, Zoro punches Elizabeth in the face, which causes her, like, neck stitches to break. Uh, so her head falls back. backwards. <laughs> And so it's just like being held on by like a couple stitches on the back, uh, and but sparks just start shooting out of her neck hole and knocks him like out of the room, right? Mm-hmm. And Jeffrey runs in and sees what happens and like you know puts her head back on and and you know tries to like lead her out, right? And as they're leading out, the preacher comes back around. And he's like, "See, I told you, I told you." <laughs> and he's like, "Yes, you did. Thank you. You're a great man. Appreciate it." <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and so then Zoro comes rushing out, sees them drive away, and, you know, does the, hey, taxi, follow that car. Yep, exactly. And then we go to Jeff applying bolts and staples, more Frankifying our Frankenhooker at this point. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he's sad that he didn't mean thing- for things to turn out this way. He was just trying to revive his fiance. that's all. Yeah. And so then he, like, she's unconscious or dead or whatever, and he, like, hooks her up to a battery and shocks her back to life. I guess the lightning was needed for the initial shock, but now he can do it with just some of his electrical equipment. Yeah, she just needs a charge, right? Well, it doesn't mm-hmm. look like she's coming back because he's like, I didn't mean for it to be this way, Elizabeth. You're, you're not a hooker. And that's when he hears a voice say, of course I'm not. What? Yeah, it, and she's just Elizabeth now. Yeah, she's back to normal? She's like, wait, I don't... What happened? I, I, the last thing I remember was the cookout, and he's like... Then there was the lawnmower. You know, he tell, yeah, he was like, you, you know, you... And she was like, how bad was it? And he was like, yeah, you, you died, and I I had to bring you back. Uh, and then she looks down, and she's like, wait, this isn't my body? These aren't my breasts? What, <laughs> right. What's going on here? Yeah, and well, he, t- he explains that he had to bring her back with the use of this uh, estrogen-based blood serum huh that's weird mm-hmm. that he said that again uh yeah. so he can only bring women back really weird that he's saying that yeah because she's like you need to share this gift with the world and he's like well the whole world can't use it only women right uh, and she's like well still i mean that's half the population you could really help a lot of people 
Counterpoint, why not a testosterone-based blood serum? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really just for the end game. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> She's like, it's weird. I can, I feel like I can kind of sense the other women that, that are parts of me. I can, I can sense them inside. Right. Um, well, it turns out that Zoro has arrived rather sneakily, and Jeff's a dummy for just leaving a machete on his uh, operating table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, like, the last thing, Jeffrey's like, I know I had to do some unorthodox acts to bring you back. That's, like, his his last words as uh, Zoro chops his head off with the machete. Which, amazing. Just, yeah. just one clean swipe chops his head off. But yeah, now... this is like a Friday the 13th yeah, head chop. Like exactly. It's, you know, Zoro is kind of built, so maybe he could pull that off. I don't know. I'd be interested. <laughs> yeah. But no, he's like, oh, you know, you're made of my girls. He, he's selling this to Elizabeth. So now you're you're my bitch. You know, you're all of my bitches. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm taking you. Um, and then he starts, like, yelling the different girls' names, and he's waving a bag of crack. Like, he's assuming that, like, those parts will kind of take control of Elizabeth, and they'll go, come back with her. Well, they are calling um, out to something, but not Elizabeth. They're calling out mm-hmm. to the things in the freezer. Yeah, the freezer flips over, and we get, like, the most reanimator-ish mm-hmm. stuff in this. You just get these weird mutated parts that you've got, like, an upside-down torso with a mouth coming out where the vagina should be. And breast uh, on it for its eyes. Yeah, it's just all these, you, you know, I mean, it is like the stuff that Herbert West does. It's right. just, like, and then screaming Mad George. A head, a head with legs and forearms, but no torso or anything else. <laughs> Yeah, but they all attack Zoro and drag him back into the freezer. Yeah, and it's really weird that we look linger on Jeff's head getting covered in that purple goo, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. <laughs> Elizabeth goes over and picks up Jeffrey's head, and she's like, Jeffrey, I have an idea. Yeah, he did explain to her that he wrote down everything meticulously on what he did. <laughs> so if you didn't get what we were saying earlier, uh, Dr. Elizabeth... Uh, or at least Elizabeth in a doctor's headlamp and all that stuff. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, Jeff, we had to make a few changes, <laughs> but we brought you back. Yeah, and he's like, but I, it was an estrogen-based thing. And she's like, yeah, I know. So I had to do some unorthodox acts, like directly quotes his last words at him. Mm-hmm. Pulls the sheet off the mirror, revealing that he now has a single woman's body. It didn't look like it was a like constituent parts. It like looks like it was a single woman's body. Yeah, there's less like obvious stitch. You know, with with uh, Elizabeth, they really go to to the point of like you know, part of her arm is is darker complexion. Like her face is really pale. Mm. They like make it look like it's different body parts. But here, it's just one rubbery looking body that right. <laughs> does not look realistic at all. It's, it's literally Jeff's head stuck through a board with animatronic body twitching. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it seems like they probably could have done better by just putting like fake boobs on his real body, and it would have looked more real. Yeah, but yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> but you know, Liz loves him now just the way he is. She loves or her. They love each other now. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, we're we're together again. We're gonna be together forever. We're and then Jeffrey together. just screams in horror as we cut to credits. Yep, the end. Uh, so this the ending was very. I told uh, Anthony this is very reminiscent of the Tales from the Crypt episode Spoiled, in which, mm-hmm. you know, technically gender bending with, you know, <laughs> the oper- opposite person's head swapped. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was pretty interesting in this. So shout out to our uh, dads from the Crypt there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, like, I feel like, you know, this is definitely Jeffrey getting his comeuppance mm-hmm. at the end. You know, like, he's treated... You know, I mean, women like, he's like talked parts. about trying to... Yeah, he's treating all these women like parts, including Elizabeth, you know? Like, he's stapling her stomach because she's too fat at the beginning or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and trying to, and, you know, and then as soon as she's dead, he's instantly like, well, since I'm going to be rebuilding you, let's, let you know, let's give you some porn star body parts. And, like, that's, you know, I mean, he's instantly trying to upgrade her instead of just being like, I want my Elizabeth back. Right, he's looking um, at her like she's an object. And hilariously mm-hmm. at the end... He also gets that, you know, the male gaze show, shown back at him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like literally, it's his male gaze <laughs> looking at his own naked female body. Uh, yeah, so it's, 
Um, yeah, that, that again, like I really think that, that you know, there's you could just watch this as a dumb movie and have a good time, yeah. but I, I don't think you have to scratch too deep below the surface to see that there's a lot of a lot of social commentary in here. Right. Still, still very valid today. Most, <laughs> the majority of it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. it could be said better <laughs> in many cases. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, I think I, 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 this is one of my favorites. I watch this movie mm-hmm. at least once a year. I love this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, you know, it's it's talking about how you know drug addiction is a problem and people need you know need support in those situations. And you know, I mean, like, if they, you know, like we talked a couple weeks ago on the Patreon about harm reduction uh, I did with with uh, my wife and everything, and you know, that's. Uh, that that's definitely like if harm reduction was a possibility here, then these women would have more agency over their lives. Right. They could choose to be sex workers if they wanted, because that's, you know, a valid form of work mm-hmm. or they could choose other things. And I, I feel like both of these are still issues today. Like, you know, drug addiction and sex work are both things that are still being stigmatized and people are put into cycles where they don't get choices in their lives because of because right. of these things. Well, to be fair, we're only a few months out from a uh, terrible decision by the Supreme Court that uh, basically tried to remove uh, bodily autonomy. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. So, yep, yeah, this movie is definitely just as just as uh, relevant now as it was when it was made, and that's unfortunate. Very sad, actually. <laughs> 30 years yeah. later, nothing has changed. Damn. Yeah. We're living in the worst time. <laughs> really? Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's a fun movie. You know, I, like I, this, yeah, I would highly, highly recommend this if you've not, not seen this yet. Yeah. Give it a, give it a spin. You know, Anthony, we, we've, we've just got through the, the, the Franken warp. We've, uh, maybe found ourselves a little bit of love. We had a couple laughs at some robots, uh, back in the day. <laughs> Um, well, maybe we ought to revisit that. Maybe, you know, something a little bit more robotic, but a little bit more, would I dare say wholesome? (laughs) Yeah, this is, this is another kind of love in a way. Like this is the, the, yeah, the wholesome love between a lonely inventor and his robot creation. (laughs) Yep. Next week we'll be talking about, um, Brian and Charles, uh, which came out late last year in England, and it may have played in some theaters in America, but nowhere near us. Right. Uh, but it, it finally just dropped to um, Peacock a couple weeks ago, and I was super excited. Um, so yeah, I, I instantly rearranged our schedules so that we could watch <laughs> it soon because I really talk wanted to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. All right, Anthony, where can they find us? Yeah, so you can find us, uh, you know, on most social media platforms at the Frankencast, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Tumblr. Um, you can find us on Reddit at the underscore Frankencast. I almost said Frankenstein. <laughs> uh, um, you can email us at the Frankencast at gmail.com. Uh, and you can join us over at patreon.com slash the Frankencast. Yeah, we have a Mastodon, too, if anyone uses that, right? Or did you mention? Yeah, that? yeah, we have a Mastodon and a Hive. I don't think either of those are too active, but if either of them becomes viable, the uh, yeah, then then we'll be more active there. But right. but they are there. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, the 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 Patreon definitely that's not going anywhere. We're definitely more in control of what goes on over there. Mm-hmm. So you know, you're definitely welcome. We've got you know weekly content going over there. So there's there's lots of stuff if you haven't haven't been there um, and. We tend to get into more deep dives about minutia and and weird little things that you know we wouldn't want to spend a whole episode on here. Right. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun over there. Yeah, we talk about monsters if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, an awful lot. Yeah, lots of monsters talk. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, anything else to be said, my friend? I think that's it. Well, in that case, to be can in you. Illustrations on Instagram. 
Our theme music is by Vivek Abhishek. Thanks for listening. <laughs>